Praise the Lord that we can be together virtually, and we're excited to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And in this time uh, of a pandemic, the COVID numbers are increasing greatly in Indiana. So we've gone all virtual at Zion, and we're just going to continue to pray for those that are dealing with it, those that are affected, and in a positive way, continue to be the church to reach out, to care for one another, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And I'm excited to share from the book of Acts and how the church just powerfully reaches out to others in extraordinary ways. So let's pray. Gracious God, we just come today, whatever time that is, to worship and honor you, to learn more from your word, to be encouraged and strengthened, to know that you are worthy of our praise, that you will bring us hope, no matter what kind of circumstances we are dealing with. You are a God who cares, a God who is involved, a God who will offer us hope, even in very difficult times. So let us worship you. Let us come before you in all humility and want to continue to get to know you better and to be strengthened by you and your holy word. So we thank you, we praise you, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So from the book of Acts, we're in chapter 16, verse 25. And this one verse, about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. I was so excited as I read through the scriptures and came across this verse. It just jumped out the image. Paul and Silas in prison, and they're singing praise to God. They're in isolation, but yet they are just wanting to honor God. And their praise, their songs were reaching the prisoners around them. We don't know for sure everything that happened that night and how the prisoners reacted, but can't you imagine the witness? Everyone there that's a prisoner is isolated and, and locked up and feeling so down, humiliated, embarrassed, shamed, all kinds of emotions, and yet here are Paul and Silas praising God. Sometimes one verse in the Bible just jumps out and, and gives me such an, an image and a passion, and I hope it does to, to you as well. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. It was a pretty bad moment for these guys. They're confined. They're probably in stocks, you know, locked up. And here they are, still singing. It has to be a low point. They're hurt and they're frustrated. It's a terrible time. But they know who to turn to in a time of need. They know where to go when they need help. So for you, what's been one of the worst times of your life when you felt alone, when you felt chained and, and bound up, when, when you feel like you were so isolated and wrongly accused that people didn't understand? They, a time where you were just hurt and you were wrongly treated. Your feelings are exposed and raw. And it seemed like there's little hope and little future. You may have had tears in your eyes. For some of us, we might say it's the year 2020. Isolated and emotional and so many problems. For others of you, a time quickly comes to mind that is extremely painful. And so seeing how we can take Paul and Silas' story and be encouraged and know that God can use those times 
and help us to, to turn it around and to make it better. During the time of the pandemic, there's been job loss and isolation, depression. During this time, there's been racial tension and election tension. There's been wildfires and hurricanes, cancellations of more things than I, I care to think about right now as we continue to cancel different events we've looked forward to. There's just a disruption to our routine. There's huge expectations for, for parents as they try to do their job and homeschool now, and the virtual learning and take care of that. that. The metal, medical workers ha, have tried to do so much and see loss of life over and over. It's a very difficult time, a time that it is hard to imagine that we could sing God's praises. Or perhaps a few of you are old enough to have lived through the Great Depression or heard stories about it. There, too, there was job loss. There was food insecurity. There was a great pride as people's jobs were taken, but yet what to do? There was homelessness, hunger, a great scarcity of so many things, more than just toilet paper. There was a mistrust. There was a rapid rise in the crime rate. There was suicide. During the Great Depression, there were women, women turning to prostitution so they could get some money to feed their family. There was alcoholism and smoking increased. There were men who were so upset about not being able to provide for their families, they left completely and abandoned their responsibilities because they just couldn't take it. The hopelessness that was there. It, too, was a pretty bad time, and it lasted much longer than a year. We pray the pandemic doesn't last that long is but with all these things can we turn it around can we see Paul and Silas's example because their year was not going so well either back up a chapter or two and, and see where Paul was you see Paul and Barnabas were working together in ministry. They were visiting different towns and, and sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and reaching people, working well together. And then it says that they were getting ready to, to go out and Barnabas wanted to take John Mark. Well, John Mark previously had deserted them, had not shown up and abandoned the ministry. And Paul felt taking him was not wise at all. And the scripture says there was a sharp disagreement. And the term used meant that there was a great bitterness that came with this understanding as well. And so Paul and Barnabas separated ways. And so now Paul took Silas. So Silas was not his first choice to go out on this mission, this ministry excitement. And so they continued on. And I'm sure just like anybody else, that feeling of, of disappointment, some anger, some upsetness as they went about, but they began to do God's work. They went to Durba and Lystra and they met with Timothy. They went to places like Phrygia and Galatia and Philippi and they spoke to so many towns. And so I imagine Paul was like, okay, we're on track again. It, things are going well. We're reaching people for Jesus Christ. And it was on a Sabbath day that they went to a place to pray. And there were some women gathered there and they met Lydia. As they shared the gospel with her, she believed in salvation of Jesus Christ. And she and her whole household were baptized. Things are going well. People are coming to know Jesus Christ. So Paul and Silas continued on, and they met another woman. There is no name listed for her, but she was a slave, and she had a, an evil spirit within her that allowed her to speak about visions and dreams. 
And so her master used her for fortune telling and he made money off of her. When they met her, she said, these men are servants of the most high God and they have come to tell you how to be saved. She understood who they were. Paul and Silas also understood that it was not her speaking, but a demon that recognized the Christ in them. And the demon was speaking. And so they cast out this demon, this evil spirit, and she was spiritually free. But her master was not happy because that meant that his income of fortune telling by her was now gone. And so he began to say terrible things about Paul and Silas. He told the authorities, the whole city is in uproar because of these Jews. They are teaching customs illegal to Roman practice. They, he was telling lies about Paul and Silas. He really didn't care what they taught. He was just mad because his income had been affected. But the authorities believed this man because he was from the town and Paul and Silas were outsiders. So Paul and Silas were stripped and beaten. They were humiliated emotionally and they were hurt physically. And then they were put in jail most likely in stocks. But their response that we read is that they sang praises to God. Imagine. They still believe that God cares, that God loves them, that God is worthy of their praise. And it says the prisoners are listening. Some people may currently feel very emotional and physically hurt. Can we yet praise God? I love that this story does not end there. For as they're singing their songs, God sends an earthquake and opens up the gates of the prison. The jailer had fallen asleep. And when the earthquake wakes him up too, he sees that the doors are open and he's afraid for his life because if the prisoners have escaped, he's in trouble and they will kill him. So he thinks he should take his own life instead. But Paul and Silas stop him. No, we are still here. We worship a God and we'd like to tell you about him. The jailer is more than happy to listen because his life is spared and He listens and accepts Jesus Christ as his Savior. And just like Lydia, he and his whole household are baptized. Paul and Silas went a a very difficult place, a very painful place, but yet they chose to praise God. And because of their praise, the prisoners listened The jailer and his whole household became believers in Jesus Christ. They were saved because Paul and Silas went to the one who can make a difference. Paul and Silas were wrongly accused, beaten, and imprisoned. But the prisoners could still hear their praise. The jailer was ready to listen to their message and lives were changed. So somebody right now is watching the church, Christians, what we post on Facebook, our our reactions, our understanding of everything that's going on us. And yes, it's painful both emotionally and for some physically either from having COVID or having loss of job and being hungry and, and caring. So what does the world see? Are we praising yet? We have the opportunity to make a difference by offering our praise 
to God because God is still good and God still loves and God can give us hope. As I think about many people that have gone through difficult times, here specifically at our church at Zion, I, I think of Sharon Gingrich and had cancer for the second time. And she praised God for giving her a longer life from the first cancer. Her life was more about praise, that she had been given so many blessings. And she just continued to focus on the goodness of God and loving her family. I think about Karen Miller and has she too had cancer, that, that God just continued to use her she was making crafts and, and doing things because it's what she liked to do, but she wanted to offer hope to someone else. So she was making things and sending them, even though that she knew she was terminal. She could continue to praise God and make a difference and bring hope in someone else. Both of these women were positive people. When I'd go visit and they were dealing with terminal cancer. They not only had the hope of heaven, they had hope that they could make a difference now in their lives by praising God, by serving the Lord in simple, practical ways. What a witness. One of the wonderful ladies in our church too is Estelle, and she's 90 years old. And she's been sick different ways and she says, I have hope in Christ, no matter what. If I get to live, which I think I'm supposed to, then I can continue to serve the Lord. But if I die, then I get to be in heaven with Jesus. And I'm okay with that too, she said. What a witness. Even through a very difficult time, her 90-year-old body is physically weak and has many different problems but she stays positive and continues to praise her Lord. What a witness. We have the opportunity when we're going through difficult times to praise God. When we're in confinement, have disappointment, financial stress, loneliness, may we find ways to honor our Lord to sing his praise, to, to serve him, to share to others that God is still good. I pray that we'll turn to the one that makes a difference and that will give us the strength to have that passion to live a joy-filled life no matter what. I want the world to hear us giving God glory and honor and praise that we can make a difference in other lives because we're telling them about a wonderful God, not always about a wonderful world, but a wonderful God in a very difficult and painful world. God can use all kinds of circumstances for building God's kingdom. So I invite you to sing praise, to share praise, to write praise, to share the hope. Not just today, but continually throughout the days of head. Here are some of the other praises that I see in our church currently. You see, we had a, a couple choir members get COVID, and I was part of that choir in the same room. And I was so blessed that they called to check on me. Are you doing okay, pastor? Did you get it? Are you okay? And then others from the congregation too have just checked and, and seen, are you okay? Leading through this and, and not being able to be together and having to do things virtually. Are you okay, pastor? And how much I appreciate that and the prayers that are going out as all the pastors are leading in a time that they never expected to lead. And so I praise God for the compassion and care of, of so many for their pastor, their shepherd. So I praise God that we can send weekly letters and just continue to connect to people. 
We email them out, but for those who don't use email, I praise God that our secretary, Judy, mails all of those to people so that they can stay connected. So they continue to get not only just information, but encouragement. I talked to one of our women not too long ago that lives far away a distance, and and she said, thank you so much that we get these letters of encouragement, that we're staying connected to you. It's much appreciated. And so we're glad to check in with Virginia and, and all the other people that are a distance from us and to bless and encourage them as we reach out and share God's praise that we're still the church and we're, the church is open even though the building is closed. I thank God for a wonderful parsonage and plenty of food that we have enjoyed so many blessings during Pastor Appreciation, we got gift cards so we can go drive to a restaurant and, and have them deliver right out to our car and have great food. We are blessed. I'm blessed that I can call my mom and see my kids and grandkids via, uh, Facebook, or via Skype and a Google Duo and just stay connected with our family. I am blessed. I praise God that our choir director, our music director, Matt, had a mild case, and he is back playing the organ and just celebrating God's music and his praise. He has posted music, and he's helped tape the sermons, and willing to adjust, especially today, as needed. And so I just thank God that he is willing to serve in that capacity. I praise the Lord for our leaders and many who have medical expertise who continue to give us wise counsel. I praise for our shepherds who I've asked to help connect to people, to our committee chairpersons, our Sunday school teachers who are all trying to stay connected to all of the the church family and care for one another. I praise the Lord for the wonderful Indian summer, and we had some wonderful warm days. And even in some of our cold days, we've had some sunshine, and I give thanks to God. I thank you, Lord, that your word is accessible, and I can share it by Facebook and the website and share the passion of your word that brings light and life. I praise you, Lord, who are reaching out to other folks who have not been in Zion, invited them to share in God's word or or just care and, and reach out if they need something, a neighbor or someone you work with, to share that God is good and he is worthy of our praise. We praise you, Lord, for Theodore Christopher Gamble, who was born this week to Jeff and Steph, and we celebrate his life. I praise God that Sandy and I can go to work as well as all of our adult children are able to work as well. I praise God for Terry being able to work and sanitize our facility to keep us safe. I am grateful for Casey who's also done taping and posting and praying and adjusting and trying to reach out to our youth and children. I praise you that teachers in the school systems can go virtual and still see their students and stay connected. And we give thanks for Caleb Wolfslayer, who turned one year old. He is our miracle baby. And so it's great when we were able to see him and continue to share. Those are just a few of the praises that I could sing and shout and, and share in a passionate way that God is good and God is still at work. God still loves. God still creates. God still heals. God still forgives. God still offers grace. God still still sustains. God still listens to our prayers. God offers comfort. God still gives us power to resist evil. God is still victorious. God's word is truth. We can sing songs at Thanksgiving. We will be able to sing Christmas carols, Jesus is born, and joy to the world. We can sing songs like Paul and Silas, sharing in their time of isolation and trouble that God is still worthy of our praise. And the prisoners, the world around us, is listening. We do not know exactly 
what the prisoner's response was. But we know while Paul and Silas were in captivity, in quarantine, in a terrible year, in a time of crisis, when their lives were on the line, they praised God and sang. May God find us doing the same. May God give us the strength and the ability to see the hope and praise God's holy name. Amen.